In this video, we're going to show how we can draw what's called a shear force diagram for a beam with uh, some simple loading upon it. So first of all, we're going to remind ourselves what a shear force is. So in the diagram shown, a shear force is the action of two forces that would cause the deformation of a section of material. In this case, we've got a rectangular section of material that then has become trapezoidal. Uh, so that is what we call a shear force. Uh, when communicating shear forces to other engineers, we find it useful if we can tell engineers what the direction of the shear force is. So we've drawn here that we have a shear force going upwards on the left hand side and down on the right hand side and we're choosing to call this a positive shear force so up on the left and down on the right are what we are considering to be positive however this is just a convention it's just a choice that we're making in these videos you might find that other engineers choose to go with the opposite direction and so if I chose that the trapezoidal shape that generated I'll just draw this deformed in the other direction like so and I chose this to be positive then I would choose the sign convention like this to be positive um, but we're not choosing that for these series of videos, we're going to choose that up on the left and down on the right to be positive. Okay, now whichever sign convention you go with, it's always good practice when you draw any diagrams that you point out what the sign convention is anyway to make it unambiguous to whoever's checking your calculations. Okay, so we're going to show an example now of how we calculate what's called a shear force diagram experienced by this beam. And we can then use these shear force diagrams in design. But for this course, we're just looking at how we draw the shear force diagram. So I have a simply supported beam. We have a pin support on the left hand side, a roller support on the right hand side. And right in the middle of the beam, we have a point load F. So that's at a distance L upon two from either of the supports. Okay, so the first thing we need to do to be able to calculate the shear forces is we're going to need to know what the reaction forces are at either side of this beam. So we have RAY and RBY. We also have an RAX, but I'm not so interested in that. So Let's write down what we're doing. So, calculate the reactions. And it's always good practice, even though I've just done so on the diagram above, is actually to draw a free body diagram of the system that you're interested in. So, I have R A Y, we have R B Y, and we have the point load in the center, which we called F. And to finish the drawing off, we always need some dimensions. So let's dimension the drawing. So we have L upon 2 and L upon 2. And so to calculate the vertical reactions, not worried about the horizontal reaction, all I need to do is take the sum of the forces in the y direction. So sum of the forces in the y direction. So I have R A Y plus R B Y equals F. And the extra bit of information that I know is that the system is symmetrical. So R A Y and R B Y will be in equal, be of equal magnitude. Therefore, but I can say from symmetry, symmetry, I can say that R A Y is equal to R B Y, which is equal to F upon two. And 
the direction of those forces would be pointing upwards. So, and I'll underline that as that's a key result that we'll re reuse later on. Okay, and now we're going to go on to the new bit, which is actually to calculate the internal forces. So, calculate internal forces. So it's always good practice to, when you're writing calculation sheets, to tell the person who's going to be checking your calculations exactly what you're doing at any moment in time. So to calculate the internal forces, and the way we do this is, what we're going to do is use something called the method of sections. So you might have encountered this already in trusses. If you haven't done trusses already, then the method we do is, what we do is we choose, so I'm going to start at the left hand end A, and I'm going to draw a portion of the beam, which I'm then going to cut. And then I'll draw the free body diagram for this portion of the beam that I'm considering. So we had the reaction RAY, which we calculated to be F upon 2. And then in the centre of the beam, there will be a vertical force coming from the right-hand side of the beam that is keeping this portion of the beam in equilibrium. So normally you would consider, we normally take a, a Y positive direction for this force. But in this case, we've already chosen our sign convention that we would have up on the left and down on the right as positive. So what I'm going to do is directly, I can see that I've got an up force on the left hand side. And so I'm going to draw the force on the right hand side. And I'm going to call this force V. I'm going to draw this downwards straight away. And if V turns out to be a positive number, i.e. going in the direction of this arrow, then I know that I will have a, a positive shear force by considering the sign convention that we're using in these examples. So now that I have my free body diagram drawn again to calculate a shear force, in this orientation at least, I'm going to take some of the forces in the y direction. So I have F upon 2 minus v must be equal to zero and then rearranging the equation this leads us that v equals f upon two so this turns out positive which means it is indeed going down or in the same direction as we drew on the free body diagram and i think it's useful to point out that that is going down and so straight away, I'm going to go back to the sign convention, drawn it a few times already. But I had then a force F upon 2 on the left-hand side pointing upwards. And a force F upon 2 pointing downwards on the right-hand side. And so that is indeed what we're choosing to be a positive shear force so getting this kind of deformation so I can finally say that my shear force V equals plus F upon 2 okay so if I look at my original free body diagram. The equations of equilibrium we used for the free body diagram of this cut section would only apply until about this point along the beam just before we hit the point load F. After we hit the point load F, this free body diagram we've drawn is no longer applicable. So we need to draw a new free body diagram for finding out what the shear force is beyond the force F. So I'm going to draw the new free body diagram. And I'll draw it longer just to show that we've gone a lot further along the beam. So I have my point load F. 
I have my reaction RAY which equals F upon 2. I'm choosing then this as a positive x direction and I also need to know the distance to where the point F is applied which is L upon 2. And again in this case I'm going to take the sum of the forces in the y direction and that must be equal to zero to be in equilibrium. So looking at the free body diagram, we have F upon two at the left hand side, so the A reaction. Then we have a minus point load F. And then again, because I'm going from this left hand side moving to the right, I'm gonna to choose to put the shear force V that needs to be in a keep this portion of being left equilibrium i'm going to choose this to point down straight away so i have in my equilibrium equation minus v equals zero and i can now rearrange this equation and i'll get that v equals minus f upon two and we need to be careful what this means what this means is that v or the magnitude of v is f upon 2 and it was minus because it's going in the opposite direction to how we drew on the shear force diagram so it's actually pointing upwards okay so now we need to find out what is the shear force at this point along the beam and what we do is imagine a piece of material here and we draw the free body diagram for that piece of material and we knew that we had a V pointing upwards and that was F upon 2. At this side of the portion of material, so here, we can see we have F upon 2 pointing upwards, F pointing down, so we have f upon 2 total pointing downwards and from our sign convention which was up on the left down on the right we know that this is a negative shear force so finally we write that v equals minus f upon 2 and to make this correct what we're going to do is write some qualifiers on this statement so we said that v equals plus f upon 2 in the region of the beam from naught until the dimension x reaches l upon 2 and we'll do the same for the other statement but this statement is correct from when a dimension x measured from the left hand side is either equal to L upon 2 and is appropriate right until we get to the end of the beam so that is at a coordinate x equals L. So now we know the shear forces at any point along the beam we could have made cuts let's go back up a little bit we could have made cuts at any point along the beam between x equals naught and x equals l upon 2 and got the same result and for the second half of the beam we could have made cuts anywhere we liked on the beam and still got the same results because there's no change in the boundary conditions okay so now we can go on to draw the shear force diagram okay so i'm going to draw an axis and then what i'm going to do is draw I'll draw a line going upwards and dimension that as f upon 2 and then from here I know so if this is the point 0 l upon 2 and l this is the dimension x but the value of the shear force remained at f upon 2 until I hit the coordinate L upon 2. I also know that I have minus F upon 2 
for the entire right hand side of the beam and that gets me to the center where x equals l upon 2 and at the coordinate x equals l upon 2 we have a jump in the value from a plus shear force to a negative shear force and at this point it's worthwhile just shading in the diagram so that it can be seen and to finish this diagram so we've already got a coordinate axis going along in the x direction you should put a, a y axis and label that with v and the new units you're using so in this case we'll go with newtons could have been kilonewtons okay but whatever the units you're using for your problem and to finish this example i mentioned it a few times is that you should always indicate on this diagram what you are choosing to be positive what you're choosing to be negative and in this case we are choosing up on the left down on the right to be positive